Before we get this video underway, I did want to give a little bit of a shout out to some of my friends, Parm V, as well as Cameron. You guys probably know these names. They've been popping up here and there on my channel over the past decade, pretty much. And they're also mods in my chat, so whenever we stream, we do see some people saying, oh, who are those mods? These are my friends that I've had pretty much for the majority of my life over here. And we recently started playing NHL 22 ASHL Chell drop-ins here and there, so... You can see some of the gameplay once in a while on the channel. Jack Fearless is back here and in business. We did indeed used to do a Be A Pro series with Jack Fearless in NHL 11, I think it was. So big OGs will remember this name. Either way, though, we're talking today about a name on the free agent market that has been linked to the Toronto Maple Leafs in more ways than one. He is a Stanley Cup champion, a former Dallas Stars draftee, a guy who didn't really work out with the Dallas Stars. He yeeted off to Russia, came back to Colorado, was fantastic this season for the Avalanche, and is now one of the guys that is going to demand a payday. It is 27-year-old Valerie Nachushkin. Now, Nachushkin, as we said, it's kind of tough to believe he's 27 years old already. It just feels like yesterday that the 2013 draft came and went, but I guess with guys like McKinnon and Horvat and all that also being taken in that selection, it makes a little bit more sense over here. But Nachushkin, as we said, was drafted 10th overall by the Dallas Stars. He never really became a good Dallas Star. He maxed out at 34 points in 79 games played in 2013-14, so the year after he was drafted. But... Injuries did derail his overall progression, and eventually in 2016, he decided to leave the NHL going over to CSKA Moscow. He made his return to the Dallas Stars in 2018-19. He wasn't really all too great. He posted up 10 points in 57 games played, and then he got bought out by the Stars in the summer of 2019. He signed on with the Avalanche for the next few years, and he's coming off a season in 21-22, where in 62 games played, he put up 52 points, 25 goals, and 27 assists. He really just became what he was supposed to be earlier on in his career. A big, powerful winger that has a scoring touch here and there, and that also plays pretty well off the puck, too. Think of Yuri Slavkovsky, but with a little bit of a lower ceiling. He then had the Stanley Cup championship run that the Avalanche went on in 2022, where Nachushkin went out there and had 15 points in the 20-game sample. Not to mention the fact that he had, what was that, five points in the final six games against the Tampa Bay Lightning? Three multi-point games, a two-goal game... He was absolutely phenomenal for the Avalanche in this final series, and you can debate that if you were only taking a look at just the finals MVP, Nichushkin could very well have been just that. He just kept on scoring goals, always getting on the board, he was super consistent, and a lot of people kind of had their eyes on this guy as a pretty big name free agent heading into the 2022 offseason. Now, you take a look at the Colorado Avalanche, and they have themselves a pretty interesting conundrum when it comes to guys they have to re-sign. Not only do they need to re-sign Achushkin, but they also need to re-sign Andre Burakovsky, Arturi Lekadin, Nazem Kadri. On defense, you have Jack Johnson, Josh Manson as well, not to mention the goaltender Darcy Kemper. There are a few names that the Avalanche are going to need to re-sign, and with $25.6 million in cap space, you're probably not going to be able to re-sign them all. And so, for Achushkin, being the guy he is, Maybe an odd man out, who really knows? The Colorado Avalanche apparently have this guy as a priority, according to all the insider information that we have had. But that doesn't mean that other teams are not allowed to look on the inside and start salivating a little bit. This is the fourth period and their top 30 UFAs list of 2022 as of July 2nd, 2021. Yeah, no, it's kind of funny how they put that there. You need to update the website. It's as of yesterday, buddy, not of 2021. But either way, there is indeed a list of the current free agents, so it's not from last year. Johnny Gaudreau, Forsberg, Kadri, they're all here. If we go over to Nachushkin and we see what they have to write about him, he is the seventh overall player on their UFAs list for 2022. The Avalanche want to get Nachushkin locked in on a new deal, especially after his performance in the playoffs, but several teams might be willing to pay a higher price via free agency if he becomes available. His price tag has skyrocketed. Now... Yeah, skyrocketed is a pretty good word. I mean, he was making $2.5 million last year, and he put up under a point per game, 52 points in 62 games played. Here are the teams that he is linked to, according to the fourth period David Peñota's website. Colorado, of course, the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Devils, the Oilers, the Jets, the Kraken, and the Flyers. Now, we're also going to go over on to 32 thoughts from two days ago, or 
two mornings ago? Something like that. This is what Elliot Friedman wrote about when it comes to every team heading into the NHL draft. And when it comes to the 21st team on his list, Toronto, he goes out there and he talks a big deal about the cap situation, Jack Campbell, you have John Gibson thrown around in there too, whether or not that's going to go down. But another situation to watch is Rasmus Sandin. All I've heard is this is a trickier situation than the Maple Leafs hoped or wanted. Valerie Nachushkin is exactly what they need to, but we don't know if he'll be available. Maybe Max Domi fits. A completely irresponsible whopper of a long shot prediction? They take a look at Giroux, but it means that someone big goes. Now, Valerie Nachushkin has been linked to the Toronto Maple Leafs in more places than one, and I wanted to talk about this entire idea over here because this is a player that I think if you're going to get rid of Ilya Mikheyev, Valerie Nachushkin could be a pretty good replacement on your wings over there. Despite the fact that Mikheyev is faster, which is not something I'm going to dispute, you could debate that Valerie Nachushkin is, plain and simple, just better, especially after the breakout year he had this season. You have to be, of course, very wary of the fact that he did take so long to break out, and that in 2021-2022 he was playing on such a stacked Avalanche squad that you could debate maybe the fact that Nachushkin had 52 points in 62 games played was more so a factor of the team he played on rather than his own individual explosion of talent, although both things can be true at the same time. The reason I say that is because even though Nachushkin scored at, what was that, a 52 divided by 62, multiplied out by 82, a lot of twos in there, he scored at a 69-point pace, which is phenomenal. Very nice pace right there. He still was the 8th highest scoring player on his team, behind Rantanen, McKinnon, Kadri, Makar, Burakovsky, Landeskog, and even Devon Taves. So... Nachushkin, even though he was very good this season, you could debate it's partly the team that he was playing for that boosted his overall stock. You have to remember, even last year, he had 21 points in 55 games played, not nearly the same amount of production. There's a reason the Dallas Stars bought this guy out after giving him a second chance in Russia, where he wasn't even a top point producer over there either. For Nachushkin, though, if he works, he does indeed have a factor or two that I feel like the Toronto Maple Leafs could benefit from tenfold. The size, the playmaking, the shooting, the scoring, the offensive IQ, as well as what he does when he doesn't have the puck. He is a workhorse out there, and he tries his behind off. Valerie Nachushkin is today what he was supposed to be back when the Dallas Stars selected this guy 10th overall. It's just, we've only seen one year of that, and so I could totally understand if some people are kind of wary, saying, okay, Nachushkin was fantastic as a 27-year-old, but as a 26, a 25, a 24, a 23-year-old, he was not that great. He's making $2.5 million a season this year, and he definitely produced above that pay grade, but how much are you going to go out there and spend for him next season? We know that the Colorado Avalanche do indeed want to keep him around because of what he did in the Stanley Cup playoffs and especially the Stanley Cup finals, but if he does go to the free agent market, what does he get there? I keep on coming back to Mikheyev because I feel like that's the most natural replacement fit for me, but if Mikheyev is going to demand something in the five million-ish dollar range and the Toronto Maple Leafs don't want to go there, what do you say if you go out there and you spend that five million dollars on a guy like Valerie Nachushkin instead? We've said this a few times, but the Maple Leafs right now, at the time of recording this audio, the Leafs only have four players on their forward core that are making over $3.5 million, and guess what? It's the big four. William Nylander, Marner... Tavares and Matthews. Alex Kerfoot is making $3.5 million. You have David Kemp making $1.5 million, and then that's it. Everybody else is making under $1 million, or they don't have a contract. So, the Maple Leafs do have some maneuvering they could go about when it comes to this offseason. Valerie Nachushkin is just one of the names that I feel like they could actually benefit from if he does go to free agency, and if he's able to produce in the same way that he did in 2021-2022 for the rest of whatever contract it is he gets next. He is certainly not a lock, in my opinion, to produce at a 69-point pace once again, but the odds are looking a lot better for him now than it did a year ago. So, if you're a Maple Leafs fan, let me know in the comments all your thoughts about Valerie Nachushkin. Did you watch the Stanley Cup Finals? Did you see what he did in the postseason? Did you like what you see, too? And if you did like it, how much did you like it? Would you want that type of player on your team next year? Are you not really worried about the insecurities that I personally have, that Nachushkin just really broke out as a 27-year-old? Is it guaranteed that he produces as well as he did this year next season? Let me know in the comments all your thoughts if you're a Maple Leafs fan. What do you plan to do with Nachushkin or Mikheyev or whatever if that's the conversation you end up having if you are Kyle Dubas and company? I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm 99. And bye.